From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Forklift products and services provider Maslift Africa, in partnership with Mitsubishi Forklift Trucks, in March launched Mitsubishi's new generation Grenadier Forklift Series for the Southern African market. Tasneem Bulbulia tells us more. Maslift is the distributor of Mitsubishi Forklifts in Southern Africa. Maslift Africa CEO Marco Cavani expands on the new product. Mitsubishi are launching a new Grandier series. It's an update on the 20-year-old current Grandier that we've had that's basically made our name in the market over the last two decades. So it's the launch of the, the upgraded new version of the Grandier. The beautiful thing of what Mitsubishi have done is they've kept all the important stuff very similar. You know, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. So the engine is the same, the transmission is the same, the masts are the same and actually interchangeable with the old model and interchangeable with our sort of basic spec unit called the Ninja. Um, so tr the, the major change is the VCM dash and as you know in South Africa we're not the best with electronics so if stuff breaks electronically it's expensive you generally just replace. What they've done is they've reinforced it now to make it as reliable as possible and it looks pretty cool too. What I love the most about this product is a forklift is a grudge purchase. So you're, you're, it's either adding to your cost of production or your cost of distribution. And people often say to me, it must be similar to selling cars, but it's not. A car is a passion sale. Forklift, you're buying something very expensive and giving someone you've never met before to drive it. So it's got to save you money. It's got to be reliable, it's got to start every morning, and it's got to save you money over its life. And that's what this forklift does. What, what we have is the lowest fuel consumption in the market. It saves you anything from half a litre to 1.3 litres an hour. Industry average is about 120 hours a month, so you, you're saving around 2,000 rand a month purely per forklift on fuel. We have servicing every 500 hours, so that's like saying instead of servicing every 10,000 k's in my car, I'm now servicing every 20,000 k's. So it's, it reduces the amount of downtime for the customer, it reduces the amount of cost for the servicing, etc. And then the beauty is it comes with the longest warranty in, in, in the market. There's three year, 5,000 hour powertrain warranty from Mitsubishi. And we at Mastiff, I don't know, I think we're quite clever here, we extend the warranty if you take a maintenance contract to 8 years or 12,000 hours. It's so basically the entire life of the asset will have you covered and will warrant that machine for you. That's how much we believe in the reliability and the robustness of the product. Cavani also touches on the sustainable features of the product. The two major features there are the, is the engine emissions. So it's a tier 3 engine emission, which is about, it's about as efficient as we can get in this country with the fuel quality that we have here. You can't get any more efficient without starting to have problems with the engine. And then what I like about it is that all the lights, the entire product comes with LED lights. So there's no changing of globes, etc, etc. It's perfect for the South African market. It gives you that perfect mix between reliability, uh, sophistication, but at the same time ease of servicing, etc. Uh, I would say there aren't really any specific markets we won't target. Naturally, things like food, etc., and specifically very close indoor areas will go electric. But anywhere that needs an internal combustion engine, needs a bit of strength, uh, long distance trips, etc., definitely the Grandia will be there. So it's, it's, it's across all regions. It doesn't matter if it's FMCG, it doesn't matter if it's manufacturing, it doesn't matter if it's government. The Grandia is the perfect forklift. In the township of Lawley, southwest of Johannesburg, Bia Multinational Heineken and Community Environmental Sustainability Nonprofit Organization, the Green Pop Foundation, have built a sustainability focused green zone. Skulk Burger has a story. A green zone aims to promote sustainability focused behaviors within communities by creating open green spaces and parks using indigenous plants, as well as establishing food gardens. However, community initiatives must be sustainable and sustained to have a long-term impact, and Heineken and Greenpop emphasize that the project in Lawley and the other green zones they are building are founded on deep engagement with the communities to determine what is most important to them before designing the green zones. Heineken South Africa Senior Brand Manager Bhavna Mystery explains the aim of the green zone projects. Number one, we launched a 650ml returnable star bottle, and to support that launch, what we are doing is something that we call Heineken Green Zones. And this is really a sustainability initiative for us as a brand and a business to give back to the communities that we serve. So each of these green zones is very customized to what the community needs. So there's one in Philippi, there's one in Eldorado Park, there will be one in KZN and one in Pretoria. This one here, Sakikaya Youth Development Center, it's all about building a home and that is what the center is really about and that's why 
Plants and food are really important because that is what the community asks for and that is what they need. So the vegetation that's being planted here are things, vegetables, medicinal um, plants, so that it can really give back to the community and serve the community in a way that they need. Green Pop Urban Greening Project Manager Chris Nash explains how the team designs a green zone. We went through community engagement to make sure that anything we designed was in line with the actual community needs, that whatever we installed or put in would be stewarded and uh, have custodians by those community organizations. Um, and through that engagement we consulted with various thought leaders or researchers um, and we ended up at our plant selection that was specifically around food security because that's one of Sakikai Youth Development's uh, programs is around food security and education um, as well as local and indigenous medicinal plants or plants of cultural significance because um, we believe that, that organic agriculture, natural medicine can really contribute to community health and well-being. Uh, there's also a very important threads of cultural heritage in people's relationship to the plant and natural world. Um, uh, and we, we want to preserve and conserve not only ecosystems but also the cultural heritage of people in those ecosystems. The way that we've designed the garden is really using biomimicry, so we're learning from nature. And when we look at nature, plants grow in a stratified layer system. So have the tall plants in the trees, the canopy that use some of the light, other light filters down, there's understory, there's ground covers, there's shrubs, there's the root zone. Uh, so we're really trying to mimic a, a forest ecosystem with our fruit trees. Uh, as the canopy with perennial herbs and medicinal plants underneath spaced out so there's still space for annual vegetables in between so we're really creating a, a high diversity, high intensity garden space that really optimizes uh, productivity in a, a relatively small space but also creates a lot of diversity which results in, in resilience and adaptability when there's a lot of diversity if the conditions change or there's a drought or some of the plants will be more adapted and it won't just wipe out the whole crop. Same with pests and disease. So these are best practices when it comes to agroecology, organic farming, uh, ecosystem restoration. Um, and it's really about learning from nature and, and, and applying that wisdom. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.